Morning everyone, um, welcome to Thursday's Thought for the Day. Um, you know in Africa there's a, a proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. Um, well, I, I also think it's, it takes a village to support an adult. Even if we love solitude, we all need community, friends and family, or family we choose if our own family experience has been traumatic. And that they help us to find our moral compass, our spiritual center, our path in life. And uh, we need communities of conscience and care that are filled with um, all sorts of interesting and, and, and sometimes quirky people who are quite fallible, yet willing to take us as we are in our humanity. People who are kind, even when they challenge us. And uh, for most of my adult life, I've lived with Winnie the Pooh and his peaceable kingdom. Um, and, and the Hundred Acre Wood where Winnie the Pooh lived has inspired children and adults for over a hundred years. But I, I came to Winnie the Pooh um, quite late um, when, I, when I was 18. I was working in a children's home. It was a pretty awful place and uh, there were no toys and, and no books. But one day um, I found in the rubbish an old battered copy of Winnie the Pooh and I'd never read it before. And I read it and was so taken with it that I decided to read it to the children who, who ranged, these were all boys that I worked with, who ranged from five to 17 and I found that they loved it as I loved it and when Mavoyan and I ran the School of Hope charity in Willenhall we would have a reading group where, where I would read to the adults who came and these were broken people people who were homeless or with addictions who, who many of whom had never been read to and they came every week week to listen and this was one of the books I read to them and discussed with them. And they loved it as the children had. And I've lived with that hundred acre wood and bears that talk and donkeys who complain. And I see elements of the gospel and how the church should be in that hundred acre wood. A community where everyone knows your name, sees your imperfections, and accepts you anyway. A community where kindness rules in word and in deed. And that's good news, isn't it? That's the gospel, to be accepted, loved in all your unique quirkiness. And that's what the first group of disciples were, weren't they? Men and women, they were cowardly and they were brave. They were big spirited and sometimes narrow-minded they were faithful and they were doubting and their very uniqueness became the rock upon which uh, the movement following Jesus emerged the thing about the gospel and the thing about Jesus is that he always saw more than meets the eye and always brought the best in you and even if the best didn't seem particularly good Jesus found a way to use that imperfection to bring something beautiful into the world. And, and that's the gospel also, according to Winnie the Pooh as well. So a, a realm of stuffed animals um, coming to life through A. A. Milne's pen. Um, take Eeyore. <laughs> I can be a bit of an Eeyore. He's always dour and needy. To, uh, needy to look for the dark cloud on, on any sunny day. And yet, the great thing about Eeyore is that even though he's basically clinically depressed, he still gets invited to participate in the adventures and the shenanigans with all of his friends. And they never expect him to pretend to feel happy. They just love him anyway. And they never leave him behind or ask him to change. And in the church at its best, at its best, we welcome folk just as they are. The one next to you, 
or the homeless person who comes in. We're kind, even when we disagree. Or we'll take pig piglets, always anxious, always anxious. After all, you know, he's a small animal and the world is, is so big. And yet, in some of the adventures, it's Piglet who saves the day. Summoning all his courage to rescue his friends from danger. And here we take the little ones and give them a dream and tools to become larger than they imagined. Perhaps that's what Jesus did with the boy with the five loaves and the two fishes, whose generosity fed a, fed a multitude. Or look at Rabbit. He, he's a micromanager, a bit, bit um, ADHD, I think. Um, suspicious of strangers uh, or anything that's uh, un, unfamiliar. He's the, the apostle of we've always done it this way. Did I say he was ADHD? I didn't mean that. I was thinking about Tigger, really. We've always done it this way. That's what Rabbit thinks. He likes the way church was in the good old days and worries that strangers will destroy his way of life. His bluntness can hurt, and yet he overcomes his suspicion of strangers when later in the series he makes new friends with those strange animals who come to the wood Kanga and Roo. And Kanga and Roo, they come without document documentation, don't they? They're strangers in a strange land and give some heart to the community. And then there's Owl, who uses big words, reminding everyone that he's the smartest in the wood. But the problem is, no one understands him. And once he gets talking, he doesn't even understand himself. And yet he's loved. The brightest and the simplest belong in that realm of God. And then there's the ADHD Tigger, which is who I was thinking about earlier. Hopping through the forest, talking loudly, sprinting up the aisles of the church just to show how happy he is. A regular nuisance, perhaps disrupting the, the order of worship, sometimes during the service. And yet his... Uh, messy spirituality is as real as the most quiet but ardent believer and then there's Pooh who's driven by honey who meanders through the wood always in search of a snack or a honey beehive a bear of little brain but all heart and love and he saves the day by reminding us that love is the only thing that really matters and that when we love God in one another, we'll be the church God wants us to be. Whether we are 10, 50 or 200 and wherever we worship. And in that 100 acre wood, they all belong. They're all needed. And together they bring out the best in each other. Just like that body of Christ described by the Apostle Paul. Everyone needed, everyone important everyone having a gift to share. We need a pole star at this time, particularly. We need dreams and possibilities to lure us forward and remind us that God is the God of possibility and adventure and abundance. And that when we protest about what we don't have, God reminds us that right here, in what we, we perceive to be limits, Life is waiting to be born. In some ways, that's the message, one of the messages that Tom gave yesterday in his sermon. And one day, Piglet asks Winnie the Pooh, when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you say to yourself? And Pooh responds with, what's for breakfast? And then asks Piglet about his first thoughts for the day. To which Piglet responds, I wonder what's going to happen exciting today. So what's going to happen exciting today? That's the message of Winnie and his friends, and it's the message of the Gospels. You never know when God will show up, and God always does, to bring something adventurous into our lives and to call us 
from the familiar to the exciting and the predictable. It takes a village to raise a Christian. God is with us and we can reclaim that holy child in each of us. And wherever we are, we'll be home. And if you haven't read Winnie the Pooh, please do. It's, it's wonderful. This is my big book of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Better than the, the tatty copy that, that started me off. Um, don't think of Winnie the Pooh as the Disney version because the Disney version is far, far away from the original spirit of, of the books. Anyway, you take care of yourself and um, I'll speak to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.